Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am very excited for today's video because I'm going to be trying out some new makeup. Some of this is brand new to the market, like the new House Labs Concealer and the new Kosas palette that just came out. And some of this is more just new to me or fairly new, things that I'm still trying to form an opinion on. Um, and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Colin. I'm a non-binary Latinx scientist and lover of makeup with a definite soft spot for indie makeup and high-end makeup, which you will see both of here. And I tend to take a pretty analytical approach to my content, my collection as a whole. Um, and I have new videos every week, so I'd love to have you subscribe. <laughs> Okay, so it took me like seven times to film my intro, so let's hope I got a good one. Um, but I am really excited to try some of these out. So I wanted to film this last year, last year, last week. It's been a long week. Um, I wanted to film this last week uh, when I got this. So I actually got this Christmas palette uh, before it was even announced. And I wanted to film a little video just using this, but uh, life got away from me, like, work was busy, and then I had a really bad allergy thing going on, and this eye was swollen and angry for a couple days, so I couldn't wear makeup at all, couldn't wear contacts, anything. So, now here we are, a week later, finally able to sit down and film. Um, but I've got uh, a handful of new things, like I have the one of the new bronzers from RMS, I have the new Kosas Brow Pencil, which I already used, the new Fenty, um, eavesdrop stick. Uh, I also have my Surratt foundation if I feel like using that. Um, House Labs concealer, very excited for this. So just excited to play. So I'm not wearing any makeup yet. I did do my brows already and I do have a little bit of lip on. So my lipstick right now is the shade, it's the one of the lip slicks from Surratt. This is the shade Heaven. Um, it's very, a uh, very my lips but better kind of shade. Uh, so I just threw that on and then I did already do my brows with the new Kosas Brow Pencil. So they did send this to me in PR, um, and I'll talk about that before we go on to anything else, just because brows are already done. Um, it is a really nice brow pencil. Uh, it's really tiny, so if you want very hair-like uh, strokes, I think you might want to try this out. So this is made in Korea. I don't remember the cost. Um, but it is really nice quality. It is uh, a really nice color. So they sent me medium brown. And then just to show you how fine of a tip it is, I'm gonna swatch it real quick next to a couple other things. So here it is. You can see I put a little bit of brow gel in and then I used this for a couple spots that needed it, like right there. Um, it is very tiny. It is the smallest brow pencil that I've used. So you can see it's not crazy pigmented, but if you press, you do get some color. But you can see I just did some swipes. There's one by itself. You can see it's a very fine, like a very fine tip. Spoolie on the other end, that's pretty standard. And then the other two that I have that I can compare it to are the House Labs in soft brown and the Surratt. I don't remember what shade the Surratt is. <laughs> Um, it doesn't say, but if we want to do a side-by-side -side swatch, here is the House Labs, which is my, has been my go-to favorite, and you can see it is significantly thicker, and then the Surratt right next to that, and it's about the same thickness as the House Labs. Maybe it's a little blown out because I had to swatch it a couple times, but you can see how tiny this is, so... If you're someone who's been really on the look for something like a really fine tip brow pencil, I think this is worth checking out. I've been using it every day for the last week or so. Um, yeah, about a week, week and a half, 10 days, um, and really happy with it so far. I'm gonna start with my eyes because I have not used this yet and I don't know, I doubt I'll get really any fallout, but just in case, I do wanna start with my eyes. This is the Kosas Undressed Palette. So this is gonna, this is already launched. This is $40, I believe. I do think some people have discount codes with Kosas. I don't have one yet, although I did talk to someone about it. So if I get one, I'll put it somewhere. I'll put it in the description box. Um, so this is eight shadows. 
they're each 1.1 grams. You get a pretty standard amount per shadow. Um, and the box looks exactly the same as the palette. Pretty nice compact thing. Um, this says it is a clean eyeshadow palette in eight neutral but hotter shades that'll heat up your lids. Uh, it says it's smooth, but creamy and buildable, one shimmer, seven mattes, and it has cucumber extract in it to soothe your eyes and it is talc free. Let's see, what else does it say on here? Um, made by Kosas, made in the US, 12 months shelf life, and they are vegan and cruelty free and all of that. So um, this is their first eyeshadow palette, so I'm very excited for it. And I saw uh, the trend mood post for this and the comments were vicious. The comments were, no one needs another neutral eyeshadow palette. This, you know, I have 20 things that look like this. Well, like this is boring and stale and like people are just going in. Um, and I think unnecessarily so. Like, I feel like every time a neutral palette gets launched, except for a few things like the new Natasha Denona, um, especially unless it's like that, like more pinky, cool mauve, kind of tone, almost any time a new neutral palette launches, the comments are filled with people saying like, I own 200 of these, I don't need any more, or this is bullshit, this is stupid. But I think the people in the comments are forgetting that they are not necessarily the target audience for these. I'm gonna go on a bit of a, a rant here. <laughs> um, I think it's, this is their first palette. They're very much a clean beauty, very much minimalist makeup your skin but better, like, they're not going to launch like something with multi-chromes in it, that's just not their brand aesthetic, that's not their brand identity, that's not their whole shtick. So like, it seems stupid to say that that's what you would like. And also like, being mad that a brand has launched their version of a neutral palette is stupid. That's like being mad that a brand launched a foundation and being like, well, I already own a foundation, so what's the point of this? They're allowed to have a neutral palette in their range. Doesn't mean that everyone has to buy it. Most people aren't gonna buy every neutral palette that comes out. But if you like the brand and that's your vibe, then like, you know, that's what it's made for. It's uh, it's made for their customer base. And I think a lot of people who are very involved in Instagram makeup or the YouTube makeup scenes tend to forget that we are not most consumers. Most consumers are buying one neutral palette a year, maybe two, using the same eye looks every day, not using super sparkly things, not using this, like, that is, a, there's a reason Pat McGrath's neutral palettes are her top sellers and her fun color stories aren't. Like, that's what sells and that's what most people want. So I think, especially when that's true, the, the vibe of the brand, I think it makes sense. Editing Colin here, I, don't think I mentioned this here. I did mention it in another video or somewhere else, but uh, in regards to people's like <sighs> visceral hatred towards the new Kosas palette and the comments on like trend mood and stuff, I thought it was interesting that like my sister-in-law came over uh, a few days ago and she is someone that doesn't wear makeup all the time. She is very much the target audience for most makeup brands because she doesn't buy a lot. She's pretty basic, pretty standard with her stuff. And she was over the moon for it. She was like, this is perfect. It's all the kind of colors I wear all the time. It's the things that I want to use. And it's all, she said flat shadows, not matte shadows. But she was like, all of these palettes are so shimmery and so sparkly, which are pretty and I like, but I can't wear those on a day to day. So this is perfect for me. And I just think we all need to take a step back in this like beauty obsessed space. And remember that most people who buy makeup are not us. <laughs> it makes sense. So now let's see if this is worth the money or good quality. That's a separate thing. Sorry about that little rant. I just, it, I just, uh, it felt, felt necessary. Um, and I'm not just saying that because they sent this to me in PR. If the quality isn't good, I will say so. Um, I like Kosas products in general. There have been a few things that weren't my absolute favorite, but in the, for the most part, I really love everything they've sent me or that I bought from them. But I just think people need to pause and not be one as mean unnecessarily, but also like, I think people who own hundreds of eyeshadow palettes need to take a step back and remember that 90% of 
the consumer marketplace is not them. <laughs> and so maybe like take a seat and like step back and like remember not everything is catered to them. <laughs> um, it's the same with Pat McGrath's newest launch. The beauty community is so angry about it. I'm still working on my review. I just haven't been wearing as much makeup lately. But it's also like, people are mad that she keeps really interesting pinky neutrals or pinks or neutrals or whatever. But again, that's what sells. <laughs> um, and she's not gonna release palettes just for the collectors. That's just not gonna happen. Um, Okay, so when you open it up, see how long this video ends up being. You get uh, a nice mix of warm and cool tones, uh, and then one like copper shimmer. Um, I've touched a couple of these just to see how they felt because I was, I, I couldn't, I was uh, impatient. That's the word, <laughs> I know English. Um, and I think they did a good job at being a nice well-rounded neutral palette. If the quality is good, I think this will be a go-to travel palette for me so I have some like good neutral mattes to like take with me in a compact thing to use with some special shimmers uh but I think for some people this could be a really good everyday palette so you've got uh it actually has shade description so we've got hint which is a neutral light vanilla whisper which is a soft cool gray could be a good contour shade for some people peak which is a rosy neutral rosy taupe and then we've got the peachy champagne shimmer which looks more copper to me, but we'll see. Uh, Gaze is a warm peach. I would say that's right. Uh, Drape is a warm tan. I would say there's a bit of an olive undertone to it as well. And then Untie is a reddish brown. I would say 100% yes. And then Flaunt is a warm dark brown. So I would say the colors are aptly described. So I'm gonna do swatches real quick just so we can see what the colors look like on my skin tone in case that is useful to you. Um, and then I'm gonna do an eye look and then we'll do the rest of my makeup. Um, I'm just gonna do these on the back of my hand real quick, just so we can kind of get an idea. I'm not gonna go into as much detail as I would for normal swatches, um, just because it's all mattes. Um, so we've got Hint, they feel very soft. Whisper, Whisper feels a little silkier. They feel very silky in general though. Um, and then Peak. They're very soft. There's a little bit of kick up in the pan. These are very pale on me, but I knew they would be. Um, so let's see, we've got, that's a pretty pigmented pale color though. So they are very soft, but they have a decent amount of pigment. I think this would be a good contour for someone with fair skin, um, but they do, like I can use that as an inner corner highlight pretty easily. Um, then we've got the peachy shade, the tan shade, and the warm brown. And then I'll do flaunt the dark brown on my pinky. These look nice. These are the shades that I will probably use the most. So it's a really pretty peach. They're swatching very nicely. They're pretty pigmented, but they are very soft. Um, I like a soft shadow though. I think these are pleasantly pigmented. They feel really nice, especially for their first eyeshadow um, palette. I think it, this feels really nice. Of course, I also just got everything all over my lap. Um, and then let's try the shimmer real quick. So this is the shade Strip. There's a little bit of a grit to it. Like I can feel the shimmer particles. It doesn't feel as silky as these. And then that's the color. So it's a peachy champagne. I would say that's right. It looks more copper in the pan. It's a little dry, but not in a bad way. I'm just like, it's not like a Pat McGrath creamy shadow or you know something like that but it doesn't feel bad um, and it's pretty reflective. So I'll give that a go. Um, okay, I'm, I think that swatched out pretty nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna do my eyes first, like I said, 
Let's uh, put a little primer down. This is the NARS eyeshadow primer. Uh, it's the only one I have, but it's also my favorite. It's the first time wearing eyeshadow in almost a week. So that's kind of fun. Um, let me just grab my brushes. So I'm gonna take off, or <laughs> so I'm gonna take this Refer One brush, um, and I'm gonna pick into, I'm gonna pick into, wow, I cannot choose my words today. I am sorry. I'm gonna pick up Drape, that like kind of golden tan shade. Tapped off the excess, but it picked up very nicely. But you can definitely, and you can see the swatches that I made. Um, and I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna place that right here on the outer V and then blend that into the crease. If you're paler than me, obviously you could start with a lighter shade, but I wanna start with the more mid-tone. Kind of just see how it performs. I guess I will also scoot in. Let's see that's decently pigmented. And let's see how it blends. It's blending out pretty nicely. I will probably take a lighter shade to blend the edges with, but I'm like not trying very hard. Yeah, I would say it's darkest where I tapped it, blended out easily, and it's just a, a nice silky matte get away with just using this one shade if I wanted. I'm gonna take a little bit of glaze and dust that over the edges. Could have used that as like a true transition, but I wanted to just kind of see how the mid-tone shade worked. I think they blended out really nicely. Okay. Let's try the dark shade just because. So let me grab a smaller brush. This is a Refer 13. It's a fairly small brush. Picked up very easily. You can definitely see that warm undertone to it. And yeah, these are decently pigmented. I wasn't sure what to expect. I mean, the bronzers are pretty pigmented, and I like, you know, the other, the powders from Kosas quite a bit. The Cloud Set is one of my top two favorite powders. So I'm not surprised they would have a decent matte powder formula, but you never know. Okay, that blended into the other, worked pretty well. And I, I do like that it goes from really light to not like black, but pretty deep. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do that on the other eye and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and copied that to the other eye, performed really nicely. These definitely perform better than like most drugstore eyeshadows that I've tried. Like, I saw some people say like, I would rather just buy a ColourPop for, you know, for $40 to get two ColourPop palettes or something. And like, these are definitely better performing than ColourPop, um, in my experience and opinion. Okay, let's try the shimmer real quick. I'm gonna use my finger. And, okay, so, there's a little bit of twinkle to it. Like there's definitely a champagne sparkle with more of a copper peach base, um, but it's not glittery. It's just a nice, you know, kind of standard metallic. I think the, the mattes perform nicely. This is, you know, a little subtle for me, but I do know a lot of people that this is about as shiny as they like. So, including uh, people like I know, like my coworkers. So I think it's really just a, 
a matter of personal taste. If you want something soft and everyday friendly, I think this is a nice kind of basic shimmer. And there's nothing wrong with saying basic in that sense, you know. Okay, and then I want to see how, I want, okay, so I want to see how Hint works. So I'm going to take a little bit of Hint and just put it on the inner corner. Okay, that's definitely brightening. I know some people get really mad if there's not a shade like this in a palette, and then other of us, some of us don't really care, don't really use them. But I do like a matte inner corner. And that is working on me. A lot of white cream, like those kind of shades, don't really work on me. Um, but that, that did show up. I will probably reinforce that after I do my base, but I just wanted to see. Okay. Okay, so for base products, uh, I am most excited about the House Labs Concealer. So I did wear this the other day for a few hours before I couldn't wear makeup for four days really loved it in that initial application. Um, I didn't do a full wear test um, and I don't have time to do one today, but I will be doing one soon. So I will have probably a, a dedicated video to that. Um, but before I do concealer, I do want to put a little bit of primer down. So I am using the Surratt primer. So this is the Surratt Perfectionist primer. Um, this was sent to me in PR and I do have a code of Surratt. Um, it looks like a handful of people have used my code with Surratt already, and I am very thankful because every little bit to help the channel really does help because I you know, don't make very much money. Um, I am still forming my opinion on this. It's an expensive primer, but I think I really like it. Um, so my face is going to be a little red. I'm not having the best skin day in the first place, but I, uh, it's liquidy, which I kind of like, um, it's supposed to be kind of matte, but not, not like ultra matte or something, but it does give just like a nice matte, but healthy glow to the skin. Like it mattifies and helps my skin look more blurred, but like not as matte as some primers, but it doesn't like diminish any of my glow, like skincare glow or any of the glow from the product. So I've been enjoying it, but you know, it's like $95. So if that's worth it is, you know, a very subjective thing, <laughs> but really like the way it makes my skin look. Okay, I'm gonna start with the concealer and I'm going to grab my Sonia G Okay, so I'm gonna start with concealer. I'm gonna grab my Sonia G brush um, and a towel to wipe off on. So this is the House Labs Triclone Skin Care, no, Skin Tech Concealer. Um, this was around $30. I bought it from Sephora when they had like that pre-sale. This officially launches in a few days on the 7th. Um, I'll probably have this video up before then. Um, I got the shade Light Medium Golden 23. So I am the last shade of their light medium in the foundation. I'm 160 and then that is their like dark light medium to medium range. Um, and it's their olive shade. Uh, and then um, they recommended that 24 for my like skin care, skin, eh, really, like I said, I cannot talk today. They recommended 24 as a match. They have like a chart that says, if you're this foundation, you, these are the concealers um, for you. And then like 11 or something for under eye brightening, which looks very bright. But 24 is neutral and this is golden olive. So it was like, a, of course I'm gonna buy the golden olive one. Like I have an olive undertone. Um, so I have already worn this once, nothing else, but this for five hours, I think. And it just looked like skin in the best way possible. 
So let's try it out so you get a nice cap. It matches the cap to the foundation and the powder. And then you get a nice big doe foot. It's actually kind of hard to get the doe foot in and out. Like it's a very snug fit. Um, and it is a, a fairly thick concealer, but not necessarily in a bad way. I feel like you don't need to use very much. So I'm gonna put a little bit here and a little bit here on both sides. I'm doing concealer first just so you can really see it. Um, and I would say it doesn't, it looks a little more, depending on the angle, like looking at this side in person, I see like a little bit of peach and not just the golden and the olive. But then as I start to tap it out, it just blends right in and it, it just feels like nothing while also still covering pretty well, having pretty good coverage. Like, I think I need a little bit more, but I think that looks really good. Um, and I've tried this, yeah, this is the second time trying it, so it's not a full first impression. But you can see I have a lot of redness around the middle of my face today and on like the bridge of my nose. And I would say it is covering that really nicely. And we'll get a little bit more. I have a dark spot from a zit I had last week and then that one coming here this week. I don't, I wish I would have filmed yesterday because I had perfect skin yesterday. <laughs> Shaved easily, good skin. I'll put a little bit down here. Um, I think I, if I like this, Depending on, I might get more shades. You know, this will probably be my good overall match, but if I want like a really bright shade, I might get one. Or if I want, you know, when I have a tan, I don't really have, even though it's the end of summer, I don't really have a tan because I just wasn't outside very much. Um, so if I have a tan, I will probably need a, a different shade for like other parts of my face. Um, but it looks, even before setting, it looks very smooth. And in person, I can't see a delineation between the concealer and my skin down here. It just looks, yeah. especially as someone who wears concealer most days as their foundation, I am very excited to love this. Um, and, you know, I figured I would. The complexion products that I have with me are my Surat Dew Drop, which I've been wearing a lot lately. I've been really enjoying. And then the Fenty Ease Drop Blur and Smooth Stick Tint Stick. So I've used this twice, I think, but I haven't used it on camera, so I think I'm gonna use that. Um, the Ease Drop Original is one of my favorite complexion products of all time. I have two shades, um, and because I have two shades. I picked the lighter of the two. So I have 10 and 11 in the liquid, and these seemed like a direct match. Um, 11 is a little bit more neutral, so, and maybe a tad darker, so it works really well when I'm in the sun a lot, or in the sun relatively. Um, a lot, I'd probably need something even darker. <laughs> but, and then 10 is the shade that I wear throughout the winter. So as it's end of summer, early fall, time, I figured I'd go with 10 since I'm going to be wearing this for a while. Um, this is the component. Some people say it looks, it looks cheap. I think it looks fine. Um, you know, it's 100% recyclable. And you can see you've got, right here is the main part of the shadow, but there is more down here. So as I twist it up, it goes to there really easily. Um, and you can see it looks very golden on camera. And then there is more down here. They say not to do it until you need it, but when you need to get that last bit out, you can keep going. Um, and I've used this with a brush and my fingers. I'm gonna probably use a brush today because I don't want it all over my fingers. Um, it looks very golden. This looks more golden than the liquid version. It's not a direct match. 
spot, it is pretty close. The other one's a little more yellow. This one's a little more golden. But then, as it starts to blend out, it's sheer enough that it still works fine. In winter, I look more yellow olive versus golden olive. So I will probably stick with the liquid one when it's like the dead of winter. But blend it out. It, my forehead, you know, my face is all one color. <laughs> I do like the stick version so far though. It is very creamy and emollient for a stick. Blends out really easily. And just like the original, just looks like skin. Especially in person, like you really can't tell. Um, I do think the original is a little bit more matte. So if that was a little too matte for you, this might be a slightly better option. Um, and I do think it's really travel friendly because it's a stick. Uh, you can use your fingers. You don't have to worry about it taking it space in your liquids bag. And then it does have a little cap. I have seen some people say that it is best to keep that on there for airtight, uh, for an airtight seal. But so far, I think I've used that three or four times. This, this is the third or fourth time. And so far I've really liked it. It's worn pretty well throughout the day and just looks like skin. I get covered up some of my shading mishaps from today. My skin looks a little smoother, a little more blurred. I do think it does a good job of blurring the skin. So, so far I'm pretty happy with it, um, but I do think I like the liquid more. Okay, so I grabbed two blushes. I, got, I bought two blushes from RMS Beauty. I bought one of the new shades, Bohemian Girl, and one of the old shades, Maiden Blush. Maiden's blush. Um, these are like a blush highlighter combo. So far I'm really enjoying them. I do think Bohemian Girl is less coral than it said and more just pink. Like it's coral, but it's it's also pink. Um, Maiden's blush, really, really into. Um, really liking these so far. And I did buy the new illuminator from them. That just hasn't shown up yet. Um, but I wanna do bronzer first. So I have the uh, Kosas Sun Show Bronzer. I have the shade Escape. This was sent to me um, with the brow pencil on the palette. Uh, they were supposed to send this to me a couple months ago, but it was out of stock, so they couldn't send me my shade. But I have used this twice, I think, um, and so far enjoying it. Um, and then I've got the Cripsy, Cripsy, really? <sighs> Trixie Cream Bronzer. Um, in S'more Sun. Um, I think I'm gonna do the cream bronzer for now. Um, so I'm just grabbing a brush. This is a Sigma small contour brush, although it's pretty big for a contour, but I'm picking up some of this. I've tried this both on the face, like drawing, and then picking it up with a brush, and I just prefer it with a brush, um, but you can do both. And I'm gonna tap that out here and blend that in. So you can see pretty pigmented blush. Blush, bronzer. I, my brain is not working today, I am sorry. But shears out nicely. I think I like my Fenty Cream Bronzer more because of the undertone. It has an olive undertone and so it just works really well with my skin looking very natural. But I think, especially if I, you know, am in the sun at all, I think this would be a really nice shade because it has a little bit more warmth to it. And I do have more of a warm golden glow when I've been in the sun. The weather here has been chaotic. I've been working a lot like Saturday. So today is Monday, Labor Day. Um, I worked Saturday at my new job uh, because I'm working in student housing right now while I try to still figure out if I can finish my PhD, if there's any funding for me. Um, 
and I worked Saturday because it's move. It's you know the time of year when everyone's moving in and out of student housing, um, and it was beautiful and sunny, and everybody was like enjoying the end of summer and the sun, and I was stuck at work, and then the last two days it's been raining, and like 65, so I feel like I had to work because cleaners were supposed to come, you know, clean apartments, and they never showed, so I basically wasted my uh, Saturday, which was not fun, but whatever. <laughs> Okay, so that is the cream bronzer. Um, this does, I think this is fairly cheap. It's like, well, cheap. It's for what you get. You get seven grams of product and I think it was like, I think it's like $18 or something. It's not, not the most expensive. Um, there are only four shades, but I think they're pretty flexible shades. And I think a pretty good shade range of from like, maybe there's five shades, but like they have a very good one for like pale light skin, light medium, medium, dark. Like they, they have a good shade range kind of like with their bronzer, the powder bronzers. So not fully formed my opinion on this formula, but I think it's, I think I like it. And then if I want to dust a little bit of the other bronzer on top, just to, just because this is very pigmented, like surprisingly pigmented, but also shears out well and is the same kind of color and tone as the uh, Trixie bronzer, which is kind of nice. I still think my favorite bronzer of all time is the House Labs, and I'm enjoying the Surratt one that they sent me, but... I still think House Labs is probably my favorite, but we'll see. Something about the Formula Plus undertone that's just like a perfect match for me for the House Labs. And I'm just taking a, this is my powder brush, but with nothing on it, and just kind of buffing the edges of everything so it's nice and blended. I think I will use Bohemian Girl again today. Um, so. I'm gonna pick that up on a refer five. See, it picks up decently, not like too much pigment. And then it just goes on really nicely. It's got a shine and a sheen to it, but like a healthy glow kind of shine, not like a highlight, highlight shine. So I think it's a good, I mean, it's a another makeup artist on brand, but I think it's a, a really nice formula for no makeup makeup, subtle, you know, glow from within kind of thing. If you want a super pigmented blush or a super shiny highlighter, this is not meant for you, but I don't think you would think it would be, so. Okay. So that is bo the shade Bohemian Girl. I think it adds a nice amount of warmth and there's like some coral, but I do think there's a bit of pink there too, but it's not, so it's not either too pink or too coral. It's a nice middle ground. Okay, so I think all that's left is mascara. And I do, I think I wanna try out the Melt Finishing Powder again. So let's finish the eyes. I'm just gonna take that same brush I used, uh, this is a rougher two with Hint, that pale shade. I'm just gonna kind of reinforce that inner corner. I do think these have melted together nicely. It's like a subtle look, but a pretty look, kind of what I was expecting. And then I'm gonna take the same brush, pick up a little bit of that drape shade and kind of run it under my eyes just a little bit. So the last thing before I put on some mascara and wrap up is this is the Melt Glaze Skin Sheer Finishing Powder. This I got the shade Medium. 
Um, I did swatch these in store because Nordstrom sells them in person. Um, and this one looked a little bit like a highlighter on the back of my hand, um, especially swatched out a little thicker. And the shade tan looked like a better match for my skin tone. But then if I turned my hand and the light wasn't hitting it, tan was like more me with a tan and uh, medium blended in and kind of disappeared. So I went with medium and I'm still trying to decide how I feel. Some people like Khaki said, this is more of a highlighter on her. Some people are obsessed with it. I think it has clay in it. Um, it has the same clay that's in like the Urban Decay matte setting spray. So it's supposed to help control oil and you can wear this by itself. I have tried, I used my House Labs foundation brush, which is really, really dense. And I did swipe this on as a really glowy base. And I think that was too shiny for me, but the right amount of coverage. So if they made like a slightly shi less shiny version, that would be great. Um, and I think built up it is, you could basically use it like a highlighter. Let me see what happens if I just use it as a highlighter. I don't think it's doing anything. I think, yeah, I don't think it does anything. It gives a very like glow from within kind of look. So it's not like a metallic highlighter, although some people have said it is, but if I pick it up on that powder brush you can see, I just went tap, tap. I did three little taps, picked up a decent amount, patting off excess, and then kind of tapping it over my skin. I think it makes it, it's supposed to blur, but also add a glow, which I think is a little counterintuitive. Let me do half my forehead. Sorry about the beeping outside. I think it looks, I think it looks nice, but I'm not like, I don't know, I'm not 100% on what I think of it so far. I've worn it in a couple videos, but I did wanna apply it on camera so I could get, you know, another opinion. I think it adds a nice glow to the skin. It's supposed to help with oil control because of the clay, especially if you wear it by itself. And I don't think that I get too glowy throughout the day with it. I definitely feel like I have a hair or something now. I think I'm trying to decide if I like it more than the hourglass finishing powders. And I don't know if I do, but I'm not, I'm not, I just don't know. Like I'm just, this is one of those products where like sometimes you try something you're immediately like, yes, I like this or no, I don't. This is one that I'm just really, Con not confounded or confused by, but like, I'm just like, I can't, I can't decide what I think. So now that that is all over my face, I'm curious to see what people will think. But like if I, you know, pick it up on this highlight brush and put it on the bridge of my nose, it doesn't look too shiny, at least in person. It doesn't look like I just put a bunch of highlighter on. The tip of my nose maybe, but there might also be highlight on this from last time I used it. But then if I like swatch it, you can see there is definitely a glow there. And then on the back of my hand, and that looks like a highlighter, <laughs> like a soft, like glow from within highlighter, but a highlighter. And then if I kind of buff it into the back of my hand, now it's just that glow from, glow from within. So I still need more time with this one, but I didn't want to apply it on camera. So I'm going to go off camera and put on my mascara and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the finished look. I just added my uh, Surratt mascara. I'm still testing this. Really, really love the lash tint, but trying to, form an opinion on the mascara itself that they sent me. Um, and then I put a little bit more of the Heaven Lip Slip on. Lip Slip? Lip Slick. Um, put a little bit more of that on. 
really like the way my complexion came out today. I think, yeah, I have, I definitely have a bit of a glow to the skin now that I've used the melt powder, but it's not like shiny. Um, I think the uh, Fenty Steak definitely gives a nice soft focus effect to the skin. So I think these two pair nicely together and really, really loving the House Labs concealer. So I didn't set it this time. Uh, when I wore it the other day, I did set it with the House Lab setting powder. And even then, like, you couldn't see it. And I still don't think you can really see it. It, like, I probably could build up a little bit more to cover some of my dark circles or something. But right now, it just looks like I have nothing on, which is ideally what I like in my makeup and my complexion products. So, editing Colin here. Um, I'm not wearing any makeup except for the House Labs concealer and lip gloss that I wore to work just to try it out. I'm currently about nine, nine and a half hours in of wearing the concealer. I did use a little bit of the House Lab setting powder on it um, right away. Ignore the zit. Um, but I think this looks really good. It just still looks like skin. This is not a full review. I'll have a full review later, but thought since I am doing a bit of a wear test today, I would uh, throw this in. Really excited to see how it pairs with the Surratt um, base, with the House Labs foundation itself, all of that. So I will be testing it out more and doing like a full video later, but I did want to get this first impression out there. So, so far, really loving it. I've only been wearing it for about an hour right now, and the other day I wore it for five hours, but first-ish impression is, it's great, it's amazing. So, Really happy that I grabbed to that. Um, thoughts on other things. Like I said, this does give a nice blurred finish to the skin. I think I prefer the liquid ease drop more, but if you were someone who thought that was too matte, I do recommend giving this a shot. Uh, the RMS blushes, I've worn these each two or three times now. Really liking them. I really like Maiden's Blush the most, um, and I think I'll be getting the most use out of that, um, but really happy I got both, and I think this is a nice summery shade, so I have a feeling I'll be using it next spring and summer a lot. Um, the bronzers, I've used them each a handful of times now. Really liking them. Uh, real, no real complaints with either. Um, and then the... Kosa's palette. Now that I've had this on my eyes for a little bit, the metallic is more satin. Um, they refer to it, what, how do they describe it? Uh, they just called it a peachy champagne shimmer. Um, it's not the most shimmery. It is definitely like a warm wash, like a warm sheen on my lids. I don't think it's metallic I wouldn't call it that and yeah I would say like satin shimmer but it's really pretty and like I like this eye like I will wear this eye look again I will definitely travel with this and I will definitely wear this again this is a really good soft everyday work appropriate quote-unquote look so I think if you're the kind of person that's in the market for an easy palette for travel and work like that. I think the quality of this so far seems really nice. Uh, if you're someone who likes these mattes and wants them for that purpose, but doesn't care about the shimmer, I think also could be worth it. I think if you're someone who really likes really, really, really pigmented, if you're, I mean, if you're like an indie eyeshadow person and you want like Melt Cosmetics mattes and, you know, Pat McGrath or Cleona or Terra Moon Shimmer is like, this is not for you, but I don't think you would think it would be because it's just not made, <laughs> it does not advertise as something for you. Um, but yeah, first impression, really like it. Um, a really cute little palette. So I'm excited to keep playing with it and the rest of this stuff. Let me know what you think of the products and how they look. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. As always, remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.